Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'll share with you a couple of upgrades you can do to your guitar to change the way it sounds, plays and feels. I know some of you might want another part of the SG guitar build, but I've had too much to do, so we'll have to finish it next year. This will be the last video of the year. Next week will be all the episodes for the Les Paul Jr. put into one video. So it's basically old videos. It's basically because it's Christmas and I I don't have any time to make any more videos this year, basically. So, without stalling too much, let's get into the mods that I think you can do. Okay, so the first mod you can do is, if you look on the back side of your pickup, there is a bar magnet and Instead of buying new expensive pickups, um, you might want to just try and change this magnet. It's very easy to pry off, and then you can attach any magnet you want. You can even attach the same kind of magic, just a thicker one. And usually what will happen is that the stronger magnet you put on, the puncher and brighter the sound will be. And if you put on a less strong magnet, you will basically get a warmer or dollar sound and so depending on how you feel about the sound your guitar pickups have you can go either way basically you might need to repot the pickups if you feel like you've introduced too much noise but it's really not that difficult to repot a pickup I think this is a good way to start if you are looking into start building guitars and you want to try modifying something to see where your limits at and also if you have a really inexpensive guitar Buying pickups for, let's say, a hundred euros to put in it might not be uh, the right move. I don't know. You decide for yourself what you want to do. Okay, the next mod is, if you look on the back side of a volume pot, you have three little legs. And one gets bent back to make a ground connection. The middle one goes to the output jack. And the last leg here is the one where your signal from either your pickup or your switch goes into the volume. Now, if you want to, you can put a resistor in the same place as the signal in from the pickup and then to the ground. And depending on uh, what kind of value you put, you can really modify how the pickup signal is received. It's a very simple and cheap thing you can do. Uh, a resistor cost, I don't know, um, I get like a package of like a hundred for a euro or something. So you can get all sorts of different values and experiments with what you want to do. This is one of the things you can find inside a John Mayer Silver Sky. So if you like that guitar, maybe this will help you. He uses a, I think it is it's a, 2.3 meg so it's not a uh, 3.2 K just be sure to make that distinction the meg resistor not the K kind and usually what happens is your signal gets a little bit softer basically you take out some of the highs so maybe pairing the pickup mod with this will help you a lot I've done both of these mods to my guitars a couple of times and I do like them. The next thing you can do is if you'll take a close look at your pole pieces, they might just be square to the edge and you can change the pattern in the magnetic field by how you round them over. So you can actually take the pole pieces out. Obviously we're talking about cheap pickups now. Uh, this whole video is basically for like beginner guitars that you might have lying around wanting to mod but you can take them out and you can put them in your drill and you can make them go around and then you can use a file or something to round them over and depending on how you round them over and how much you round them over you can change the magnetic feel and how the pickup will take up the vibrations and that's a way you can alter it it's one of those things that you can't really go back on though so do be careful I would suggest taking off less than you maybe want to, or really go crazy if you want to and change the pickups afterwards, if you don't like it. Another mod you can do is, it's very simple 
to switch out the bridge and a lot of other YouTubers will say that you can do great improvements to your guitar by changing the bridge. But the thing is, usually a new bridge will cost more on an electric guitar than a cheap guitar will. But something that isn't that expensive, because people don't seem to be doing it as much, is just changing the saddles. You can greatly improve a guitar with new saddles and it won't cost as much to do so. So that's something you can really do. But you can also think about what kind of saddle. If you, for example, look at the saddles on a Telecaster and you look at the saddles on a Strat, you'll see that they are different kinds. But a Strat usually also have different kinds of saddles. More vintage ones will have the bent metal ones. Modern ones will have solid block kind ones. And you can really change the way the guitar behave sonically by which ones you use. So if you have a guitar, for example, a Bullet Squire or something like that, and it's a Strat, experiment with new saddles and see what that gets you. So the next thing is, if you open up your guitar and you look at the pickups, you might have two wires just dangling from it. A red one and a black one. The black one goes to ground and the red one goes to lead. It maybe is another color than red, but you get the idea. In more inexpensive guitars, usually they are just dangling like nothing. And the thing is, that will introduce more noise. So what you can do is, you can twist those wires around. Basically, if we pretend these are your pickup wires, if they just hang like this, twist them around like this, so that they are basically one, and that will reduce noise. It might not seem like a big deal if you are playing in your bedroom with low volume, but if you get on a stage, it might really introduce some noise. So you might actually be like, whoa, what's wrong with my guitar? All of a sudden something's weird, but it's just that you've switched environments. So try that. You can go even further and you can buy shielding tape, just like the thing we use on the inside of the cavities of the guitar and on the back of the scratch plate. And you can actually put that around the wires. As long as you make sure they don't touch ground and lead connections so that you ground the lead, you can really remove some hum that way. This is usually more important with single coils, but you might actually see some big improvements. Another thing you can try is you can switch out the springs. If you have something like a Stratocaster, you don't really need to use the springs it comes with. They are not any kind of special springs that only guitars use, they're just industry springs. And you can experiment with different kinds of springs. And the way I think here is that there are two different kinds of ways you can go about it. You can try to find springs that makes the tremolo behave in a way you want the tremolo to behave, to make it easier to pull or tougher to pull or feel more like a floating trem. Obviously, you can't get too far away from the design the tremolo already has. A Fender style trem will not sound like a float rose, for example, but you can get closer for, to what you want it to feel like by switching out the springs. Another thing you can think about is also the vibrations that the springs introduce naturally. You can try to block them off with like foam or something like that, but you can also find springs that complement the vibrations and makes it almost feel like you have a reverb tank inside your guitar. I've done this and it can actually be really cool to have. So just go out there and see what kind of springs you can find in your local hardware store and experiment with fitting them inside the guitar instead. And it can be really cool to like almost make your guitar have more life inside of it than it had before by just changing the springs. This one is more for the Stratocaster users than anyone else. But if you look at Fender Stratocasters, they usually have a little sticker over where you put the trem bar. And that is because inside there, there is a little spring and they don't want it to fall out. That little spring is there to push up against the trem bar so that it doesn't uh, wiggle around so much inside there. And other companies, especially more inexpensive guitars, don't have that little spring. It's not something that you necessarily need, but you might actually want to have one. 
I have this in some of my guitars and it does change how much give the trem bar has. Well, if you open up a pencil, you'll basically find one of these springs in there. Obviously, you have to look for something that fits. Some pens are bigger than others and some... Yes, that's a Smith reference, except it's girls. Anyway, find a spring that fits inside your trem and try this out. It's very easy to remove the spring if you don't feel like using it. And you don't have to buy a really expensive guitar just to get this little spring. It's better to just buy a pen that fits. Okay, so the next mod you can do to your guitar is you can look at the value. It's written on the upper side. This one is a 500k pot. And the thing is, usually you will have a 500k for a humbucker and you will have a 250k pot for a single coil guitar. And the thing is, you don't necessarily need to go that way. You can switch out the pots and go with other values. For example, I think that a single coil with a 500k pot sounds really nice. And if you like the sound of the Jaguar, they are usually actually single coil pickups, but they have one meg pots. So you can try different kinds of values. For example, 300k pots are really nice together with humbuckers and something that a lot of people don't talk about. You can really change the way your guitar sounds and how much life it brings out and how much of the signal you let pass through the pot by experimenting with changing the values. I hope this is something you'll try if you feel like experimenting a little bit. Okay, the next part is has more to do with the feeling of the instrument. If you have a really glossy neck, sometimes you feel like your hand gets stuck. And so something you can do is sand the back of the neck to make it a more satin-like feel and your hand will glide easier. This is something a lot of YouTubers talk about and it's something you can really do to change how the neck feels. But the thing is, you can actually do this to all parts. For example, the arm carve, where your arm's supposed to rest on something like a Stratocaster. You can take like 1200 grid wet and dry sandpaper and you can doll up that area and make it really smooth so that your arm will glide over the area much easier. It will feel a lot nicer to play the guitar. It's something that happens anyway when you've played the guitar for a couple of years. But there really isn't any need to wait a couple of years before you enjoy your instrument. You could just sand it in a couple of minutes, doll up the area, and enjoy playing it. Other things you could do in a similar fashion is if you, for example, have a Telecaster with binding around the body, the edge is very sharp and it can actually f irritate the skin when you pull against it a bunch as you play. So you can take a razor blade and you can round over the binding just where your arm moves. It will, of course, change the way the guitar looks, but if you just remove enough to make it playable, it might not be visible unless you're really close up. I've done both of these things to guitars to make them feel better in the hand when you play them. Same thing goes for binding on the neck or the sharp edge of the fretboard. You can just take a razor blade and you can smooth it over and make it a little bit nicer on the hand. And it might just be exactly what you need to make it a little bit more comfortable for yourself. These are the ones I had for you today. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you try some of them out. I hope some of them are just exactly the mods you needed. If anything, you at least learned something about modding guitars and what you want and what you don't want. Sometimes you might think you want to add more treble to your guitar, but actually what you want is add more bass. You just sometimes need to experiment to find that out. And so these are things that usually cost very little money. Changing the magnets, for example, on a pickup will cost you maybe a euro if you buy the magnets online instead of like buying new pickups that might cost you a hundred euros. It's the same thing with like tools. Don't buy expensive screwdrivers that are called Master Luthier tool. Just buy a regular screwdriver. It's the same tool, there's no difference. 
it's just that one has been branded as something for guitar builders and therefore they can ask for more money. It's the same thing with magnets, for example. Guitar magnets will cost more than just regular magnets that are not branded as guitar magnets. And they're basically the same magnets. I don't know of any magnets that are like magical magnets. I hope we don't start that myth, because that would be annoying. Anyway, I hope this all helped. Let me know in the comments below if it did. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, well, the dislike bar is hidden. <laughs> Sorry, it's not my fault. I hope you have a really awesome and nice Christmas and that you get a new cool guitar for Christmas, because let's face it, even if it's fun to build guitars, it's even more fun to just get them. So yeah, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and stay awesome and cool and spend these days where we can't really go outside or do anything fun building awesome and cool guitars. And I'll see you next year when we will continue building the SG guitar and we will build some other cool things. I have a really interesting fun thing hiding away to show you guys. So I hope you will enjoy that. Well, bye bye.